Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? It is currently, I think it's 3.11. I just looked at the clock before I started. Let's see. It's 3.12 now. 3.12 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon. It is 80 degrees in Indianapolis. I just um, went and did a Starbucks review of a drink that I already reviewed. <laughs> I was trying to do uh, this drink called the Coconut Lime Refresher. I was very excited about it. And then I got to the window, or I got to order it, and they didn't have the Lime Refresher anymore. So I had to do something else, like on the spur of the moment. So I did the star fruit refresher made with coconut milk, which then Josh told me it's called the star drink. And then I looked it up on my channel and I had already review reviewed it <laughs> like nine months ago. So, um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know if I'm gonna post that video or if I'm gonna redo it and do another video, we'll see. But if you've never had the star drink, drink from Starbucks, it's actually on the menu. All you have to do is go through and order the star drink, and it's really good. It's just the the star fruit refresher <clears throat> made with um, coconut milk instead, and it's really good. How are you? So the reason that I didn't vlog last night, which was my plan, was to vlog and listen to more of my book because I am so into this book. The, Ch the Taylor Jenkins Reid book, my uh, Malibu Rising, is so good, you guys. I mean, like right from the get-go is so good. And such a great summer book as well. Like if you're looking for a beach read, it is a great beach read. Um. We're actually going to Florida here in a little bit. Um, I mean, not today, but and if uh, I don't, when do we leave? I don't even remember when we leave now. We're only going for four days for Alex's birthday. Um, but I kind of wish that I had saved this book for then because it is such a great, um, like it takes place in Malibu, obviously Malibu Rising, but it's a lot about the beach. It's a lot about surfing. It's about this party that this, I don't want to tell a lot about it. It's about these siblings that are uh, like very famous for different reasons and their parents were famous and um, they come from a very close-knit family. It takes place in 1983, but it kind of reads like today, except for when it uh, makes pop cultural references about like Bathing suit, bathing suit styles and stuff like that. Um, and like cars and you know, all that kind of stuff, sunglasses. There's a lot of that in there. Actually, Tanya said it reminded her of a Jackie Collins book and it kind of very does remind me of a Jackie Collins book. It's really good. I mean, it is really, really good. And it's told kind of in real time. So like when the book starts, it starts at 7 a.m. And like part one is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So I don't know what the sex is. And the party doesn't even start until like later that evening. And so it's this one sister, the oldest sister, she has this party every year that's like, it started off small with just like friends. And now it's like this world famous party that like celebrities come to and stuff. And it's like the last party of the summer. It's like August 27th, I think is the date that it takes place. And so it's kind of all of this background stuff leading up to that, that you can actually tell there's like a lot of tension and it's gonna play out at this party in some way. Um, she is just like such an incredible writer. I mean, such an unbelievably incredible writer. I mean, not only does she develop these characters that are, I mean, right from the get-go. I remember, you know what's interesting about this? So, um, the main character of this book is, her name is Nina Riva, and like Nina Riva is her last name, Riva is her last name. And the whole first like scene of the book is her like getting out of bed and going to the, to the cliff and like overlooking the ocean and visually they describe her in the book how she looks and then she comes inside and she like throws on this outfit 
and um, I mean everything from like the watch to her hair and how she looks and you know what's interesting is it reminds me of when I, the very first time I ever read Lucky by Jackie Collins and the description of Lucky Santangelo walking across the pool when Lenny sees her and I, rem I remember to this day that Jackie Collins described her as having jet black hair and um, like I forever will like see Lucky in my head like I mean I loved those books by Jackie Collins and this is almost kind of like that like she paints these pictures of these characters and these siblings like so profound that like you don't you can't really like you really feel like you know them inside and out not just like physically and visually but obviously you know like who they are as people too so they're like a surfing family as well like surfing's like a big deal but it also goes in and Malibu is very much a character in the book like the city of Malibu and what's interesting is so it goes back to, like it flashes back to how their parents met, which I have to tell you, I'm not like big on flashbacks. Like I don't really love that a lot in books, especially when it goes back to like tell more of the story. And it goes back to 1956 to when her parents met, to when their parents met. And, um, and I don't want to really say much more than that, but it's done really, I mean, it's not, it's done in a way that you're like interested in it. But it also, what's really cool about it is that Malibu, like you can, they, she does a really great job of describing the changes that occur to Malibu through time. And Malibu in the book is very much a, a, a character. You know, and it's interesting because I think like living in Indiana, the way that I was gonna say, Peter Mon living in Indiana, living in Indiana, like the way that I think about Malibu is I think about like these huge houses on the beach, you know, with glass windows and um, overlooking their, overlooking the um, the water and all this kind of stuff. That siren on that ambulance was so quiet you could almost you could almost not even hear it. Um, you know, I think of like money, 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 money when I think of Malibu. You know, big, huge houses with like open windows everywhere, looking out onto the beach. Of which that is a part of this book. Like that's kind of somebody's house at the beginning of the book. But then it goes back and it describes like this very first house that they ever had and like how she grew, how the grandma or how the mom grew up in this like two bedroom bung, like one floor bungalow and that Malibu back in the day was like a, fresh, a fishing and surfing area and that it wasn't like rich and stuff like that. And so it's interesting how Taylor Jenkins Reid takes Malibu and kind of changes it over time. It's interesting because I kept on thinking of Joan Didion. I had watched this documentary on Joan Didion. I can't remember what it's called. It's fantastic though if you've never seen it. I really want to finish Slouching Towards Bethlehem this summer, her book of essays. Like I've wanted to finish that in the year of magical thinking forever. <clears throat> and I always just like pick up something else when I'm sitting around reading. So I think that's gonna be like my pool book this summer. Um, cause I can, I have a hard time sitting, like if I'm on the beach, I can like read or listen to a book, like physically read a book or listen to a book. But like when I'm just like at the pool, like up in my neighborhood or whatever or with Tanya, like I'm always talking to other people. So I have such a hard time like focusing on a book. I like those little kiwi pieces that are good, <laughs> but In the documentary, there was a part where they interview somebody, and I think Joan Didion and her husband like stayed in Malibu for like a couple years and raised their kids or something. I, I feel like it was Malibu, but anyway, it was like this beach house, and it was somewhere in California. If it wasn't Malibu, it was around there somewhere. <laughs> this woman said that she would wake up and like all Joan Didion would do is she would just like sit in the kitchen and she would like smoke cigarettes and drink those little Coca-Colas that came in the little Coca-Cola bottles, you know? And there was like even, she even like showed a picture of her just like sitting in the kitchen, like at this kitchen table, like smoking a cigarette, drinking a Coke. I don't know why, but for some reason when they were talking about like old Malibu, I was like thinking of that scene. But it's a really good book. And um, so anyway, yeah. 
So I wanted to vlog last night and listen to more of my book, but um, I ended up, so Alex and I watched a series finale of Pose. I bawled my eyes out through the entire two hours of it. It was done so well. Although Alex and I at the beginning were like, this is kind of moving slowly. There were some things that I wish had happened differently. I liked how it ended. I, I wasn't disappointed. I bawled my eyes out, but... It left on a, it left on a good note. Like, it, was po it left positive. Um, and I was happy about that, that it was left on a, you know, a good note, but, um, I don't know. I don't know why they ended it. I mean, it only been a couple of seasons. I thought it was so well done. I think we live in this society now. It's like, with the exception of like Grey's Anatomy and whatnot, you know, but it's like, when your show is doing really well, it's, there's this idea to leave while you're on top kind of thing. And I don't really understand that mentality. You know, I mean, there were some shows that just went on for seasons and seasons and seasons. Why would you ever end a show if it was going well, if all the actors were still interested in doing it and, you know, it was going to still work and whatever. I, I just don't understand why you would end it. You know, you even think back about, like, Roseanne back in the day when... Um, I can't think of her name, but the first Becky left, and then the second Becky came on. Like, they even made it work. I mean, even though it, like, shouldn't have worked, like, they even made it work with, like, a new actress, you know? And then, like, the old Becky came back. Um, like, do you ever get behind a car? I'm like... And I'm not the fastest driver in the world, but this car in front of me is literally like, people are like, zoom past him, and he's just like going super, super, super slow. Anyway, um, so afterwards, I just was like really tired, and I kind of like emotionally drained a little bit from, why does it feel like my car's not shifting? There it goes. Um, so I, um, was gonna lay down for like an hour, but then I was like, a ha like half an hour, I was like kind of laying there tossing and turning. I actually was like, I'm just gonna get up and go do this and not even rest. And then I completely must have fallen asleep. Um, cause I turned my alarm off cause I'd set my alarm and then I only had like 15 minutes cause I had laid there for like so long trying to fall asleep. So I was like, well, I'll just get up. And so I turned off my alarm and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna lay my head here for like five more minutes. And then I completely fell asleep. And then I woke up and it was like, Alex was waking me up. He's like, babe, can you move your car? And it was 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> but we actually didn't go to sleep till late last night. Cause finally I looked at Alex and I said, babe, it's almost two o'clock. You have got to go to bed. So I moved to my car and then I came back in and I went to sleep for another couple hours. The, with the pups. They're so sweet. Boo Radley is so groggy in the mornings. He's, and last night, he, um, we were like just hanging out talking and Boo Radley kind of like fell. Oh, I was showing Alex this TikTok. That was like this guy putting this dog's head like right here. It was so sweet. And, um, so Alex did it to Tucker and then he did it to Boo and like Boo Radley was like so tired his head was just like <laughs> and Alex is like he's so gro I go that's how he is in the morning he's like what groggy and I said yes and it's so cute it's so sweet not going to my meeting tonight um Tony has a friend in town visiting so she's not going and, um, it's, since she's not going to go, I was like, actually, we were talking last week when we were driving. I said, I feel like I've missed, we haven't missed like our home group in like weeks. So I may go out to dinner with Alex tonight if I get all my other stuff done. He has, um, plans to go out to dinner with like three of his friends, his girlfriends downtown at this like new Thai restaurant place. So, their dinner reservations are at 7. 
but I was like, okay, great. Then I'm not gonna feel like super rushed to get all of my stuff done um, since we're not going to the meeting tonight. And um, I mean, I could go without her, but I mean, part of it is like, that's kind of like Tanya and I's like, you know, meeting night and we go get a fountain pop afterwards and stuff like that. So, and it's also like a 35 minute drive for me. We'll just see. It's gonna be hard for me to make dinner because that's at seven and it's already almost 3.30. And we'd have to leave down, we'd have to leave our apartment, leave our apartment, leave our house by like 20 till seven. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. And so I'll get my stuff done and then relax a, a little bit around the house, maybe go for a swim and then drive around, listen to my audiobook. Should be a fun little evening. You know what, I actually need to go to the post office because I have something at the post office. I have the thing in here. I haven't picked it up yet because every time I drive by the post office, it's always so packed. It's not, even, it's not packed right now, but there's enough cars that thing with the post office is you never know when you go in there like it could be five minutes or it could be 25 minutes Check my po check my I need to check my post office box too because it's been a couple days since I've checked it. All right, I'm gonna go in here and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. I have like four boxes, so I will do an unboxing on uh, my Peter Does Stuff channel because I actually have two boxes at home as well. I might have even more than that. I try to save it so I can unbox everything together at the same time. Um, so maybe I'll do that when I get home. It is hot outside today. I mean, I know that 81 is, like, probably warm to a lot of people, but, like, 81 for, like, Indianapolis in the summer. I mean, Indianapolis sometimes gets into the 90s and the 100s. I mean, 81 is perfect, but it is, like, really hot today. Like, even though it's so cloudy, today would have been a good pool day. So, anyway, yeah, pose is over. I left my cup at home. <laughs> I mean, I have 10,000 of them. I should just leave like two in the car, shouldn't I? But I left it at home because I took it inside to clean it out. Um, Suppose is over. I'm reading that book. I've just been feeling like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, so just, I mean, I know it's summer, but like, so just content and summery. It's like the smallest things. Like I love just like sitting on my front porch. Like has made me just like love sitting there. And um, although I kind of feel find myself like spending longer periods of time doing things that I'm just like you just wasted a half an hour looking at TikToks. But I enjoy it so much, <laughs> you know that it's like. Um, you know, I just, I don't know, just sitting there talking on the phone or reading comments on videos, which I love to do, you know, or um, whatever. It's just, it's been a good start to summer so far. I think getting our front yard and our backyard done and like completed, um, and you know what is so crazy? He sprayed for weeds like tons in our front walkway and they are already coming up. 
like not horribly, but like just one here, one there, you know. Oh, the other thing is I love sitting on the front porch because Mrs. B Gertie Birdie, she, uh, like I'll sit there and then she usually flies out when I like open the door to come in there. And then like after a minute or two, she flies back in. Like I think she knows who I am and feels safe enough to like come up there and like kind of hang out, you know. So, but I don't know. It's been really nice having like the front porch and the, like the back port and the back patio deck done, back deck done, and just being able to like really enjoy them and stuff, you know. It makes all the difference. We were outside a lot when I was growing up as kids. Like I think that's the other thing. There's actually a couple kids in our like. So the neighborhood that I'm in is like an. It's not like. I think when I say this, people think that it's like designed to be like an older neighborhood. That's not the case. I mean, it, a 20 year old could buy a condo in the neighborhood, right? Um, it just tends to be a lot of people that are older because I think because it's kind of like hidden, like unless you know that it's there, like you wouldn't, like it's it's be in the, so it's hard to explain how it is. It's not like you're driving down a street and you turn into our condo. Like our condo neighborhood is like situated within like a suburban neighborhood. So it's like you're driving down the street and all of a sudden you're like, "Oh, there's a condo neighborhood." Like you wouldn't expect for it to be there, right? I think part of that is the reason. I think the other reason is that it's a lot of couples that have lived in this area that I live in and then they lived in like much bigger homes. And they, because our neighborhoods, like the neighborhoods around us, I mean, there's a couple that, um, you know, aren't that way, but there's some neighborhoods around us that are like million dollar homes plus, right? And so I think when their kids leave or whatever, they downsize or they retire, you know, they downsize. And so they want to be in the same air vicinity, the same area. Um, so they buy in there. The other thing is that a lot of people move in there because... Like, they're from other cities, and they want to be close to their kids. Like, our last, like, the people that live there now, and the people that live there, the last two people that lived in there before them, the last people that lived there, they were from southern Indiana. And they came, they had it here just so they could come on, like, weekends and whatever, and holidays for their kids. Because their kids lived in Indianapolis. The couple before that... They were retired, well, he was retiring, and they moved here from Iowa, and that's why they had the condo, so that they could be closer to their grandkids and their kids. But both of them, it's interesting, ended up going and buying much bigger homes down the street. Um, and the people that live with us now, or live next to us now, are from Kansas. And um, they, um, she retired and then moved here and he still had like six months left. So he moved here like, well, he would come on weekends and stuff like that. Now he's there full time because he's retired now full time, but they're really nice. He was an engineer and she was like a administrator in schools, school administrator. And um, they're fantastic. So it's a lot of that. I swear to God, you guys, a cicada just... Can you guys hear them? And one just like flew right by in front of my car. I can see them. I can literally see them over here on the trees. Oh my God, that's crazy. Listen to that. I can see them. There, so there was this article that was kind of scary. I can see, they're literally, you can see them fly. Oh my God. Oh, it's so weird. You guys are so loud. You know what's so weird? Okay, so they're supposed to be dangerous to dogs. Like I can hear them through the windows, you guys. What's crazy to me is that on, on my way home, like, from places, like, I'll hear them, and then we'll get to, like, the street before our neighborhood, and 
they just go silent, completely silent. Like they haven't moved to our neighborhood yet. <clears throat> I hope they don't come to our neighborhood. They're supposed to be really dangerous, but, um, God, that's crazy, isn't it? I can still hear him. So there was this article that I saw about this guy, and he was in Cincinnati, and he, ha this just happened, this is so tragic and sad. He had his windows down, and a cicada flew into his head, and, like, so he veered off the road and hit a pole. Did you guys hear this? Indiana is supposed to be one of the worst states for them. I wonder why that is. It's so weird, like Indiana is such a, um, like Indiana in the summer is such an interesting state, you know, because like, I don't know, growing up here, it's just like it reminds me so much of like when I grew up here and, um, Oh, that's what I was saying, was that when I was growing up in the summer, I mean, we were never inside. Like, our parents, like, we always were outside playing. I mean, there just was no reason to be inside. Our parents would be like, you need to be outside. <laughs> you know, like, there's no reason for this. Um, it's beautiful outside. You need to be outside. And um, so we were constantly, I mean, I can remember, like, they're just, I don't remember ever, like, I mean, if it was raining or something or we were having, you know, doing something together like late at night or whatever, maybe we would be, I don't, I don't really remember playing video games a whole lot. I, I had an Atari and then I later had a Nintendo, but I was never really like a video game person. I can remember playing, I don't really remember playing on the Atari. I think that was like, I was younger. I almost kind of feel like maybe that was like, my dad was more interested in it than I was. And maybe that's why he got the gaming systems. But I do remember on Nintendo playing that, and I remember playing Pitfall. It was like a game that I played a lot on Nintendo. But other than that, I don't really remember playing a whole lot. I still have all of my Nintendo games and my original Nintendo. I don't think it's worth anything though. I think I looked up it up one time and it wasn't worth anything. And then somebody, I said something to somebody about it. I think it might've been Caroline's stepson. And he was like, you don't want it. And I was like, you can have it if you want it. Alex is like, please take it away. Um, <clears throat> so I need to look and see if it's worth anything. If it's not, I'm just gonna give it to him. I used to buy all these gaming systems for Alex because he loved to play them. So if we were at Best Buy and they had them in, I would just buy them, you know? And they're literally sitting in this basket that we have. Like the Wii's and the PlayStations and all of it. I have a hard time, so with video games today, this is one thing actually that does affect me with my epilepsy. I, I have a real hard time with video games. Um, like if I'm really close to the screen, like I have to be kind of sitting back far. And even then, like the one game that really messes with my head is Grand Theft Auto. So I used to play that with my ex and then Alex and I would play it sometimes. And I would be like 10 minutes into it and I'd be like, I can't, first of all, I'd get a horrific headache. And then I'd be like, I cannot do this anymore. Um, it's like, well, I can't really show it while I'm driving, but like if I would turn the wheel on the game, I would go, I, it's like the, the perception of it. It was like Alex and I remember the first time that we ever went to Las Vegas, we stayed at the hotel at Mandalay Bay and it was right next to Luxor. So one day we were gonna go to like see some kind of like, you know like the Luxor has these different like shows. That you, they're not shows, but they're like experiences like that you can go to or like museum kind of things. And I had wanted to go to the Titanic one. Have you guys ever seen this? Where it's like you walk upside down in the ship. They have one in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. But the Luxor had it too. And then they actually have memorabilia from the Titanic. I have such a 
weird. This was long, way long before um, I ever saw the movie Titanic. I mean, when I was a little kid, I like obsessively watched stuff about the Titanic and read books about the Titanic. I feel like I did reports on it. Um, I can remember like when that movie Rise the Titanic, like I was obsessed with that movie when I was a little kid. Well, I want, I want to watch that movie again. That movie is so bad. I should watch it again. But on and on and on, I had like this weird obsession with the Titanic. And I, I probably, I always wonder like if maybe I died on the Titanic in another life or something, if you believe in that stuff, <laughs> which I do. Um, which might also explain my fear of sharks because a lot of the people that died in the Titanic died because of sharks, supposedly. Did you know that? Also, um, I rem this is one thing I do remember from going to Hawaii, is my dad and I went to Pearl Harbor, and I remember we went out on the USS Indianapolis, and um, it's like, I don't really know how to explain it, but it's like sunk down like this. If I remember correctly, I may be completely wrong, but it's like sunk down like this, and there's like this plexiglass thing over it. And so if I, maybe I'm wrong, but this is how I remember. I was like 10 when we went, and you like walk over the part of the sunken ship so you can look down and see it. And if you don't know about the, there's actually a book that I've been wanting to read about this. It's actually just called the USS Indianapolis. Um, so it's this, so the USS Indianapolis, I believe, was a naval ship that was shot down and sank in Pearl Harbor, okay? But the majority of the men that died, died from shark attacks. There were tons of sharks. I can remember being on that thing, something about sharks, I remember. And actually, in the movie Jaws, the guy that they rent the boat from, he also, um, the shark, you know, guy, the shark hunter guy, he, remember he tells the story about all of the men going down in the USS Indianapolis? Well, anyway, I remember, like, and I wouldn't have remembered that as a kid at 10, you know, but like, I remember being out there on that thing, and I was just as afraid of sharks at 10 as I am now, probably more so then. And um, so, I was sitting there, and they're telling us the story of the USS Indianapolis, and they said, started talking about the shark attacks or whatever, and I remember I was like, I went off this thing. Like, I don't wanna be on this thing anymore out here. So, it's so funny, I have been following these accounts and they talk nonstop about horror movies. I follow them on Twitter. I follow Michael Myers and I follow Tommy Doyle. Do you guys know who Tommy Doyle is? <laughs> Tommy Doyle was the little boy that Jamie Lee Curtis dated, or dated. Tommy Doyle was a little boy that Jamie Lee Curtis um, babysat in Halloween. But then, if you go watch like Halloween 5, I think it is, he, when the woman has the baby that's like the descendant of Michael Myers and she's trying to keep it hidden, and Michael Myers is hunting her down and he kills her and then she has hidden the baby and then this guy picks up the baby, Tommy Doyle as a grown adult, and he's like has this like local access radio show. Yeah, so Tommy Doyle's like in the later movies too. I think he survives that movie. I can't remember. So there's two new Halloween movies coming out. There's the one coming out this October, which I think is called Halloween Kills. And then there's another Halloween movie coming out, I think, next year. And they're, I think they're trying to, like, end it. Like, this is going to be the end of the, what do you call it, franchise. Which is sad, right? But, like, I was thinking about this the other day. It's like... <laughs> You know, these people that like started these movies like Deborah Hill and Mustafa Akkad and stuff like that. I mean, are they, I don't even know if they're alive. Like, I think Deborah Hill has passed on. And it's like, you know, at some point, wouldn't you want to end your own franchise? I mean, you started it, wouldn't you want to end it all? It's like with those VC Andrews books. I mean, she, like, people, she, it's like if you go in there and it's like, VC Andrews wrote these amazing books and then she left outlines for years to come of amazing books. No, she didn't. She didn't. That's a straight up lie, straight from the pit of hell. 
she left an outline to the flowers in the attic stories and the prequel if you go back and you read it that way and then she wrote the book heaven and then i think she left an outline for ruby and that was it there's like and they act like she's still writing these like i mean vc andrews underneath that name has like 200 books out or something like that and I think if you still read the beginning of it, it'll say something like her brand new ones. It'll say like, this book was inspired by notes and an outline from VC Andrews. There's actually a really weird documentary. You can watch it on YouTube. And it's like a documentary about VC Andrews. We were like obsessed with those books when I was in high school. We read like The Flowers in the Attic once. I loved Heaven. Heaven was my favorite, I think. But you know, I tried to read my Sweet Audrina for, well I did read it, for the book club, the first year that I did the Peter's book club that now is a true crime book club. <coughs> I didn't enjoy it as much as I had remembered enjoying it. Just wasn't that good. I remember back in the day like not being able to put those books down. Like they were such like page turner weirdness, you know? I also think that things that shocked us back then don't, like, there's so much. I mean, we have as a society become so immune to so many things that it's like, back in the day, we're like, you know, what was the flowers in the attic? Were the mom and dad, like, they were like brother and sister or cousins or something like that? <laughs> something, I think they were, I don't know, but anyway. Like, that doesn't really shock us today, does it? I mean, like, back, I mean, it does. I mean, it does, but you know what I mean? Like, it does, I mean, there's been a, a million movies about this kind of stuff. It doesn't shock us as much as it used to, you know? Or, like, you know, in these movies where, like, somebody leaves and then they find out that their father wasn't really their father and really their father is, like, some famous person, you know? And it's like, okay, well, that's been done a hundred times, you know? But back in the day, I mean, V.C. Andrews really was the one that, the first one to come up with that kind of stuff, you know? I think we also, like, <laughs> I think there was something, like, about the idea of whether we knew that it was, like, horrible or not. Like, I mean, until people started dying, right? I think there was something kind of, like, about living in a closet. Living not in a closet. Living in a an attic. I mean, do you remember they, the reason why it's called Flowers in the Attic is because they painted those pictures and put them on the wall and stuff like that. I don't even know how I remember that stuff from reading that book. I think I must have read that book like three times or something like that. And then I saw both movies. The one with Helen Slater, which was absolutely horrible. What a made-for-TV movie. Melissa watches all of those Lifetime movies of them. I should watch them. I haven't. Oh, my God. By the way. Mel, uh, my book club partner, she texted me yesterday about this new movie that's out. Apparently, it's on Netflix, not in the United States, but in other countries. And it's called Believe Me, The Abduction of Lisa McAvoy. McAvoy? 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 But you can watch it on the Lifetime app, or you can download it on Amazon Prime for $3.99. I looked it up. It's apparently a made-for-TV movie based on the real abduction of this Lisa that I don't really know anything about. Tani was asking me all these questions last night. She was like, is it the one about this? And I was like, I don't know anything about this case, Tanya. Oh, okay. Is it is it the one about where the girl... And I said, Tanya, I don't know anything about this case. She started laughing. She goes, what's the movie called again? And she, I, so finally I just sent her a screenshot of it. Um, but there are being... All these articles are being written about it because Mel sent me one of them. People are like saying it's like really hard to watch and it's sickening and... But, like, they can't stop watching it because it's so good. So, put that on my list. I was going to actually maybe watch that last night if I got home late. I always have all these plans, and then I get so tired, and then I'm like, well, <laughs> I guess we'll, uh, we'll do that another night, you know? Truth, though. Now, y'all, my birthday's at the end of this month, you know. I'm going to be 49. On June 29th. Alex keeps on asking me, he's like, what do you want to do for your birthday? I'm like, I have no idea. I don't really care. I don't really get excited about stuff like that. 
But here's the thing, like, I don't really need, like, some huge party or song and dance or whatever like that. I don't really need all that. I mean, us going to Florida is kind of for both of our tri both of our birthdays. And although next year for my 50th, um, we're going somewhere. I mean, like, we're going somewhere, somewhere. Like, I... Hoping, hoping that the world is more open than it is now, that we can actually, you know, do that. Um, I really, <clears throat> like, I don't know that I could do a super, super long plane trip. I mean, I don't know that I couldn't, but like to the Maldives, I would love to do the Maldives. I would love to do like Thailand um, or Fiji or Bora. Those are like four of Alex's I like, like those are our top four bucket list places. He really wants to do Alex really wants to do, like, Portugal and Spain, which I would love to do, too, but those are not his tops. His top is Thailand, period, end of story. I would say Portugal and Spain. I really want to do Portugal, like, the southern part of Portugal, like, by the ocean. Um, I would love to do the south of France. I would love to do the south of Italy. Um, so those are places. But, like, I'm all about the Caribbean, too, and I have always wanted to go to either Anguilla or Turks and Caicos. I really, 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 really want to go to Turks and Caicos. I have for a long time. My dad and my stepmom, <clears throat> that used to be the only place they would go. They went there, like, five years in a row. They love Turks and Caicos. The problem with Turks and Caicos is it's, like, there's only, like, one or two flights it's just really hard to get there. Like, you spend an entire day getting there. Whereas, like, to fly to Florida or to fly to uh, Cancun or something. Like, to fly into Cancun, you can leave here at 6 o'clock in the morning. And there are, like, direct flights that are, like, you get in Cancun at, like, 9. So, you get a whole day, right? And then you fly out at, like, 3 or 4. And you get back in at 11 or something like that. When you fly to like a lot of these Caribbean places, like we looked at Aruba a couple years ago. And because Aruba, like Alex, when he was young, he said he could remember that you could see Aruba from like Caracas. Oh, the battery is dying. Um, so he's wanted to go back to like Aruba and um, or Barbados or Curacao, which are the ABC islands that are down there by um, Venezuela. And um, so we were looking at Aruba. I actually went to Aruba as a little kid with my dad and I don't remember much about it. I remember my dad running, like we ran way out in the middle of nowhere and all of a sudden we were like running over these like rocky areas or something like that. Um, but I just remember it being very like hot, 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 and kind of like very deserty. So anyway, we looked at that a couple years ago, but like you leave here at like six or eight in the morning and you literally get in there at like six or 7 p.m. So you like lose an entire day traveling, which is, that's whatever, you know? But then for us, it's like we, we wanna stay seven or eight days minimum. And so then it gets expensive because then to have like, you know, we wanna have full seven or eight days well, then you got to add on a day at the end of the day, the day at the beginning of the day at the end just for travel. So then you're really looking at nine or ten days, which that's way too expensive sometimes, you know. But I think next year I would maybe I want to do something big for my 50th birthday. I've said I've always I said I was going to do it for my 40th, and we didn't do anything big for my 40th. So I mean we we I don't even remember what I did for my 40th birthday, um, but. I know I didn't go somewhere and have this like extravagant experience. Um, one of the things that I looked at, Alex and I have never been on a cruise. Okay, I'm back. And I am super frustrated right now. Um, I was sitting here, I pulled into the Speedway and um, I was like changing my battery and then I went inside and I got a newspaper because I wanted to do the crossword today because I haven't done it in a while and I was like, okay, that would be fun. And so I was sitting here and this guy walks up, probably in his early 20s, like 22 or 23, something like that. And he's got this big dog on a leash, right? And I'm like, oh, this dog is adorable and all this kind of stuff. So he walks up and he's like doing something behind this big brick wall over there. And I couldn't see, hold on, somebody's walking in. I couldn't see what he was doing, right? It's just like this big brick wall right there. Do you see it? So I couldn't see what he was doing. And I was like, what is going on? So all of a sudden he comes walking into the store and I'm like, where did the dog go? So I'm just like sitting here watching it. I feel like I've become my friend Melissa. She is like, 
so on this stuff like when we're out in public with people and their dogs. So I'm sitting here and I'm watching and you know those things that you put cigarettes out in that are like tall like this, you put them out and it like falls down in there. They have like one up there, okay? So he's taken the leash and he's put it over the top of that thing so that the leash of the dog is on that, right? Well, the dog walks like, I mean, this is a big dog. This is probably like a 60 pound dog. The dog walks like two feet and real sweet dog too. Walks like two feet and the thing falls over because it's real lightweight, right? Where are my sunglasses? And so now the dog is just standing in front of the door with his leash just on the ground. He's not tied to anything. And there's all these cars. I mean, it's busy. There's all these cars that are pulling up there and whatever. So I get out of my car because the dog starts like walking like away from the building. So I get out of my car and I grab the dog, right? So then there's this other guy that's standing there and he's just looking at me like I'm crazy. And so I like grab the dog and I pull him back. He was real sweet. I pull him back and I'm standing by the front door and I'm just like waiting. I'm like, okay, I can just wait here until this guy gets his whatever he's getting in there, you know, whatever. So he comes out and he's real rude to me. And he's like, um, he's like, you know what I'm wondering now is if he thinks I took the dog off the thing. But the thing was down on the ground. You could see where it had fallen off. <clears throat> so I said to him, I said, I just wanted to make sure that he didn't get away. And he, just, he goes, oh, okay, or something like that. It was real rude. And I said, but I can hold him. I said, well, you go in. Because, he, oh, he had a drink in his hand, like a plastic cup with ice in it, but he hadn't filled it up yet. And I said, I can hold him while you go get your drink. And he was like, no, that's okay. And I was like, are you sure? And he was like, yeah, it's fine. And I was like, I mean, I don't mind. And he was like, no, it's fine. And so he starts walking towards, with this cup in his hand, he starts walking towards the cigarette thing again. That he's gonna, yet again, put his dog on. And so then the guy that was working in the store, he comes outside and I couldn't hear what they were saying because I was in my car at that point. But there must have been some interchange about him leaving with this cup with the ice in it. But the, who is calling me? Oh, it's my friend, my good Judy Ballerini. I'll call her back a little bit. But anyway, so there's some interchange and the guy with the dog gets kind of like upset about it. And I can tell the guy's being really nice because he's doing like, you know, these kind of hand movements, like don't worry about it, it's whatever, you know, like that kind of stuff. So then the guy walks back, he puts the dog on the thing and then he walks back. He was like real out of it too. And he opens the door and he puts the cup with the ice inside the Speedway station and just walks away with it. And then he goes back and gets his dog and he just walks and he, he like looks at me and like shook his head. Like I did something wrong. I'm like, dude, you left your dog out here to get hit by all these cars. Do not please yell at me. Okay, I was, and I totally offered to hold your dog for you and everything. And then what he, he said to me something about like, I'll just have him over here and I'll go, because I said, the second time when I said, are you sure? He was like, no, it's fine. I'll just have him over here while I go get my drink. And I'm like, your dog's not gonna stay on that thing. He just isn't. Anyway. But he walked away and he didn't get his drink and he took his dog with him. The dog was very sweet. Anyway, I was talking about, uh, oh, look at that big horse. I was talking about trips for my birthday. I don't know. I really like to go to Turks and Caicos. We want to do like, if I do like a 50th birthday trip, we want to maybe like do like three couples and probably like Alex and I, Melissa and Jason and Aaron and Eric would be like the three couples that we would do and go somewhere. And we were talking about it because Turks and Caicos to stay at a resort, like a, like, and there's not tons of resorts there either. There's like, I think there's a beaches there, but like, I don't want to stay at, no offense, but I don't want to stay at an all family resort with, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, I want to do more of like an adult trip for my 50th birthday. So the couple of the resorts that I want to stay at are super, super expensive. And then I mean, I guess if I saved a year in advance, I could probably do it. But then I also don't know that I want to spend that much on going to Turks and Caicos, you know? And then the other thing is um, that when we were talking about it, Jason was like, well, we could rent a house 
because a lot of these places if you go now you can like rent a house and like get like a chef for like the week and if we cut it between like three or four couples and it might, and we're like right on the beach that it might not be super expensive the other place I would I wouldn't mind going would be Grand Cayman although I've been there before I've just always wanted to go to Turks and Caicos and so I feel like for my 50th birthday I should do something you know and then I said to Alex because he is really wanting to go I mean this is just assuming that things are gonna be opened up again you know a year from now um, there's quite a few things that we want to do, but we also possibly want to renew our wedding vows. Well, that would be in August, and that would be another expensive, you know, thing that we would put together. So, it's interesting. When we originally talked about renewing our wedding vows, we talked about it as doing, like, um... Oh, and then our friend Erin, she has, I think it's her big birthday, and a big birthday of hers next year, too, and they're going to, like, and they've invited us to this. I think they're going to the south of France next year for her birthday. I mean, you just can't do everything, obviously, right? But, like... I have become such a saver in the last couple of years because, like, Alex and I made a decision... We used to go out of town a lot. Like, we would do little weekend trips. We would go to Chicago for a weekend, like a three-day weekend. I mean, we did that, like, every month. We would go to Louisville a lot, you know? We were always doing, like, a trip a month. And we just decided we weren't going to do that anymore, you know? And, um, you know, we used to buy a lot more things than we buy today. I mean, we really put, like, thought into it if we're going to buy something, if we really, you know, want something. So, I mean, we've saved so much the last couple of years so that we can have these experiences because um, we have a friend of ours, this couple, and they, like, every year, they take, like, two huge trips, and they go for, like, three weeks at a time, and so they're, like, marathon runners, and, like, they do, he does, like, Ironmans and stuff like that. So they usually go somewhere where, like, one of those is happening, and then they kind of, like, put the whole trip around that, you know? And so, um, but they've been to like Argentina, Peru, Thailand. Um, I think they did one in Germany. I mean, they, they go and they do these extensive trips and then they go and they see that whole area. And Alex at that time, like we were having brunch with them and he was like, I really think that we should start saving our money, you know, A, for like finishing the house and B, for like going on these trips and having these experiences. Um, which we do. I mean, we travel a lot, and I feel blessed that we get to travel a lot, but we go to, like, Miami and Vegas a lot, you know what I mean? When, which I love Miami and Vegas, but. I think for my 50th birthday, and, um, and then, you know, we had talked about doing Vegas for, like, a friend's trip to renew our wedding vows, but originally we had said that we were gonna go and do like some destination place and just have it be like either like two or three couples or like 10 of our friends. Cause you know, like Alex would want Sarah there and I would want Tanya there and um, you know, like, and maybe my cousin Caroline would come and you know. So we had originally thought about doing like some island or something, you know. And then just doing like our exchanging our wedding vows like getting it again and then like having that just be like one night of this like friends trip which would be fun actually we love unico in mexico so much i mean like that would be a place that we could do that that would realistically be affordable for everyone We should talk about that. We should talk about Unico. We haven't, I don't even think that has ever come up in our conversations of talking about this. Isn't that funny? So I don't know. We'll see. I just hope that I don't. I, I hope that. I'm smart enough to plan it ahead so that next year it's not just like my birthday comes and goes and I don't do anything, you know, like, or I'm like at the last minute, like, well, let's just go to Vegas for three days, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Like, it is a big deal. It's my 50th birthday and, um, 
I don't really care about a party and all that kind of stuff, but I would like to have some kind of, you know, experience and do something. So. I'd also kind of like to go to St. Bart's. I went there when I was a kid with my dad and my stepmom, but it was so undeveloped at the time that we went. And it was like just all these little German, you know, I remember it was very German owned. I don't remember. I remember talking about that. My dad saying there's like all, I said like these hotels or whatever. And he was like, well, they're all like German owned and by like German families and stuff like that, which was kind of interesting. And, um, I think it had like a heavy German population there or something or maybe somebody told us that. So we did like this day trip thing over there and, um, but it was, oh my God, it was gorgeous. It was like all of these like lagoons and just like these rocky cliff areas that were like small and it was like, it's not a big island, you know, and it's beautiful. And uh, I can just remember like wanting to go there. So those, that was like when we went to St. Martin one time, we like went over there for like the day and did like a catamaran trip. And I remember the whole way home, I sat on the front with my head, I can't believe this now, with my feet hanging over the the water. And I the whole time I listened to the Graceland by Paul Simon's uh, tape cassette in my yellow Walkman that I was obsessed with. And, um, my two favorite songs, well, I love that, that, I love that album. It's like one of my favorite albums of life, Graceland by Paul Simon. But I remember I was listening to You Can Call Me Al and Diamonds on the Soles of Her Shoes. And I have to say, that song, I have a live version of Paul Simon in Central Park, um, of Diamond, I have both of those songs, actually. But I have a live version of Diamonds on the Soles of Her Shoes. That is like probably one of my favorite songs of life, like in all honesty. That, Mr. Tambourine Man. I'm trying to think of like what are some of my, like when these songs come on, I'm just like, they mean so much to me. Those two, these are like periods of my life. Bizarre Love Triangle from New Order. Like, songs that really, really... Like, that is... That song, Bizarre Love Triangle by New Order, that's literally, like, my senior year in high school. Um, Both Sides Now by Judy Collins... Or the Judy Collins version and the um, Joni Mitchell version. Although, today, I like the Joni Mitchell version more. It's sadder, though. But when I was a little kid, I really remember the Judy Collins version of it. The Judy Collins Both Sides Now is a song that reminds me of my, like, younger childhood. Mr. Tambourine Man is a song that reminds me of probably, like, elementary going into junior high. Diamonds in the Soles of Her Shoes is, which is probably, like, that would be, like, my theme song for life today. I love that song. That reminds me of high school, junior high, high school. And then a Bizarre Love Triangle reminds me of the end of high school. For growing up. So. I remember listening to Both Sides Now when I was like a little kid. Like I have this like weird memory of my parents being together and I would have been like four or something at the time. Anyway, I just remember that song where it says ice cream castles in the sky. And I just remember that imagery like in my head. Like I just remember thinking of that line, ice cream castles in the sky from that song. Anyway, it's weird how memories work, isn't it? Do you ever wonder if some of your memories are like actual memories that you have or if you've seen pictures of things and then you have memories based on pictures? Have you ever wondered that? All right, well listen, I think I'm gonna get off here now and head home and get some videos going. <laughs> and then listen to my audiobook and do my crossword puzzle and just have a real relaxing evening. If I get stuff done in the next two hours, I may go to dinner with my husband, but I don't think so. I think I actually just kind of wanna stay at home and have like a lazy night tonight is what I kind of wanna do. So anyway, I'm gonna get off here now. Um, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Um, and I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Tuesday. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya!